Okay, so I'm back. Um, basically, what happened in that hand with Jax. Uh, I made that half pot size bet to try to see where I was, I guess. Uh, there were so many people in the pot pre flop. I really didn't like that situation. And then this flush draw and straight possibilities. Lots of two pair possibilities just because of people are going to be playing, you know, those 10, 9, 10, 8 hands around there that are, you know, connecting. Um, and a lot of, you know, pairs and straight draws, which I might be beating, but not by a lot. Um, and I do have two of the jacks, which, you know, gives me kind of. A good hand against a lot of those hands, I guess, in a way. But against that many players, I really hate just getting it in there because I, uh, you know, I just don't have, I'm not gonna get called by a hand that's a lot worse because everybody's afraid of the same things I'm afraid of and so I'm not I'm not getting value from worse hands but I'm leaving myself vulnerable to the really good hands so I like to play a spot like that pretty slowly um, I made a bet to kind of see where I was and see if I could really thin the field and see if everybody else to play kind of passively the guy behind me which is not who I wanted to raise me was the guy who was raising me Ooh, that's not the fault I wanted So that wasn't the guy I wanted to go against, and that made me even more concerned. So he min-raised me, and I wasn't ready to just give it up from one min-raise, so I had to look the guy up at least once, see how the turn fell, and see where I went from there. An ace came on the turn, which isn't a horrible card. I really don't really like this spot, but I feel like I need to call. What I'm looking to see. It's not what I'm looking to see. But, um, one outer. Nope. Um, I can't so I the spot. Back to the hand with Jax. I wish you guys got to see it. But, anyways, an ace came on the turn, which isn't that much of a scare card, even though it beats my Jax. There's not that many times he has an ace in his hand. I mean, there's a couple he could have, I think it was ace eight which would have given him the straight draw with the ace, um, the opening of the straight draw. And so that hand made sense to have, and he would have hit his ace there. And then also a flush draw with the ace. Uh, I mean, ace, no other aces really made a lot of sense. So ace wasn't a huge scare card in that sense, but he made another really strong bet on the turn after I checked. And... I just felt like I wasn't really beating a lot that he was going to be playing really strongly. Also, Ace-10 would have been another hand that would have actually made sense for him to have, which I'm not losing to. Um, and I guess any paired Ace that... Although, Ace-10 was would have been the one that made the most sense with how he played the flop. Um, so... I just really felt like I wasn't beating a lot of his range, except maybe an 8. Again, I can't remember the hand specifically, but I'm pretty sure it was an eight. Actually, I forgot the history. Yeah, it was the flop was ten nine seven with two diamonds. So if you had ace eight, that would have I don't need to call this. And I haven't dominated. And I fucked the nuts. Oh, well, that's good. I'm actually pretty deep in the money in this tournament. Only 40 left out of 431. Anyways, back to that hand. Here's the hand history. Just so you guys can kind of review it again. So I don't just talk and you can't remember what I'm talking Well, I guess you guys never saw it. Um, so, he bet really strongly again on the turn. And... 
being out of position and stuff, I felt like a lot of hands just having to be like 10-9. The hands I was really would be hoping he had would be hand like nine eight or seven eight or ten eight, but those hands I don't have a huge lead against. I could have looked him up again, but being out of position, I'm gonna have to probably call a river bet if the straight doesn't come, and if the straight comes, he could bluff me out. And so, I mean, I had the straight draw with the eight, and that's one of the reasons why I also called on the turn because are on the flop because I had there's some cards that could come that could make my hand look a lot better but with I believe six people in on the flop there's just so many people that could have hit that and Jax just doesn't look that strong a, a weak over pair doesn't look super valuable in that spot anymore to me I don't know if I play that hand great I, I know I didn't play it perfectly. I know that's the kind of spot where a lot of value is gained and lost. And I don't think I lost a ton of value there. I, I might have not played it the best way in an EV sense. I don't know. You guys can, if you think I played it poorly, poorly tell me in the comments or something or tell me if you think I played it okay. I don't know. I just... It wasn't the easiest spot, I guess. And it's the kind of spot that I struggle with a lot, where someone else has been kind of aggressive and I don't want to be. And I just, I feel really vulnerable when someone else is being aggressive. I have trouble in those spots. I definitely do. Yeah. Oh, just makes more sense to me. It's more like, this hand going all in here looks like a weaker play than just making a big raise. So that's what I'm going to do. Could definitely race here, but I'm just gonna take it easy and just call. The blinds are so small that I kind of like doing that. That's a really good flop for me, especially because I think this guy's gonna shove. No. I kind of expected him to. This guy's the guy's going to him. I don't like that quite as much, but I do have position on him as well. So I'm just going to try to slowly value bet this guy. I don't... I mean, he could have hearts. Could... Could have gut shot there. I feel like I probably just have a slightly better hand than him. A small value bet on the river. And I think I just had him kicked or just had a hand that was just a little better than his. And so they have a value better the whole way down. King Queen? King Queen. Alright. I should have said it before I picked the history button so you so you guys would have known I got it right, but I was saying I think I had a slightly better hand than him. So I think I played that hand very well. Um, sometimes I put guys on a range a little bit subconsciously and I'll say it out loud to you guys. I wish I was better at just stating it just for my own sake. I feel like I get myself a little muddled in my own thought and I don't concretely figure out what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, which actually I think holds me back a lot. But, um, you know, I really, it just, he played it really softly, wasn't trying to take it away from me. He obviously had something Especially with the river call, he had to have something. Um, so he just wanted to get to showdown kind of cheaply, and I think my bet sizing was pretty well to kind of have him hang around. I might have been able to extract a little bit more for a little bit bigger bet sizing with how strong of a hand he had in comparison to mine. But, you know, I think there was, was there a 10 on that board. No, there wasn't a 10. Like, like King Ten or you know maybe King Jack, he could still play out of the big blind as a hand or a small blind. He could still play hands like King Jack or King Ten, and, and you know those hands. Maybe I need to make those kind of bets to uh, get that kind of value from. So 
again, I just, I don't like getting real out of line with Ace King. And even Ace King, like I showed you on this hand earlier, uh, I don't like getting really out of line with it early on. I just, it's kind of a drawing hand in a sense early on in tournaments because you're not trying to win the blinds. I mean, you're really not. The blinds don't help you a lot really early. That's not your goal early in, in tournaments. And, you know, if you just make a big raise and then miss, you're pretty much betting, hoping the guy folds. So you're pretty much bluffing from that point on if you miss. So in a sense, it's a bluffing hand. Also, I'm not going to just shove in, especially over here, you know, 100, 200 big lines, whatever, I know, 100 and whatever here. But I'm not going to shove in a huge amount of money compared to the blinds with Ace King. It, it just makes no sense. I'm, I leave myself too vulnerable to the two hands that kill me, and I don't get any value from the hands I beat. So, with that kind of thought about it, yeah, you can make a strong bet and get someone to call you with what is probably the worst hand, but and you know you usually got the best hand on the flop and even if you miss you'll often have the best hand you can continuation bet and take it down but you're just leaving yourself vulnerable and it's not really a great way to make money because yeah you probably have the best hand you'll often take it down with a continuation bet but you know if you make the continuation bet you can only win what's in the pot when you can lose you know your bet Plus what you put in the pot on the previous uh, street that you didn't have to. Now you can obviously win more if the situation falls right and you, you hit your ace or king. But, I mean, I don't know, there's different ways to play it. I like raising with it, obviously. I just, three betting with it just doesn't make a ton of sense to me early on. I do occasionally, obviously. I think you need to occasionally. Uh, Especially if it's a tournament like so, something like this high roller tournament, I think you would need to occasionally because players play differently and these players are going to be seeing a lot. And if they see that you, you never do that, they're going to understand that you only three better early with you know ace of the kings if you never do it with ace king. But so that's a really hard thing to figure out if somebody, but. I don't know, again, I'm just rambling on. Hopefully you're getting something out of my ramblings. Uh, the lines have gotten a little bigger here. We have huge stacks, obviously. But, again, I think I'm just going to call. I'm out of position. And I just like calling. That's a good flop. Interesting flop. I don't gain a value from a lot of hands that I really would like to gain value from, such as Ace, Jack, and Ace, Queen. But, I'm going to bet. A bet? It's kind of an interesting play by me here. Uh, I'm just going to show it here. Yep. Right because it, it kind of makes it look like I have something like a jack or a queen. And I'm trying to see where I am. Because it's hard for him to give me credit for a hand this strong when I just called out of a big pawn. Now, he could definitely have me beat with an ace queen and ace jack or a queen jack, but. I, I don't think he can put me on a hand like ace king right there. Uh, it's just, yeah, yeah, I don't like this show quite as much, but, well, actually, I won't put it fold a little bit more with this hand. So, I, I don't like this show quite as much because I'm shoving, I guess, effectively.